of our new location. I would also like to welcome and thank Governor McMaster for choosing our family farm to sign the 2024 South Carolina Farm Bill. I'd like to give you a brief history about us. Strawberries are a Cottle family tradition. Starting in the fall of 1963, my father, Ned Cottle, who I'm proud to say is present here today. Thank you for coming. Right. He planted his first strawberry field, <clears throat> excuse me, in Faison, North Carolina. He sold his produce, like all the other farmers, to his local produce buyer's market. Then, in early 1970, North and South Carolina had so many farmers growing strawberries, causing an overabundance of the crop that the produce buyers offered so little for the farmers' strawberries, causing an overabundance of the crop, I'm sorry, uh, for the strawberries that many farmers started dumping their harvest in the rivers to dispose of the overabundant harvest. It was said that that year the rivers in North Carolina ran red from all these discarded strawberries. My father, being the true entrepreneur, decided he would rather have the fate of his success fall upon himself and not others. So he opened his fields up to the public for the U-Pig strawberries. He was the first strawberry farmer in North Carolina to do this. His original Pick Your Own Strawberry Farm was in Goldsboro, North Carolina. With that farm's success, my dad expanded his operations throughout eastern North Carolina. And in early 70s, opened his first strawberry farms in South Carolina. These farms were located on White House Road in Columbia and near Alligator Road in Florence. When my father retired in 2002, I took over South Carolina strawberry operations. In 2010, I moved the White House Road farm just right down the street to Detroit Road for more acreage and easier access for my customers. Then, in 2020, I purchased the old Sedgewood golf course here at Garners Ferry Road with the dream of converting the 183-acre property back into a farm and adding more agritourism activities for Richland and surrounding counties. In early 2023, a developer approached me with an offer too good to pass up to build over 800 properties on this site. But as my son, Hunter, said to me, Mom, some dreams are not for sale. Okay. Thank you. So here we are today. I decided not to sell out to the developers and instead chose to invest over $1.2 million in our community. So with the help of my son, Hunter Bullock, who's now a fifth generation strawberry grower, Cottle Strawberry Farm in South Carolina now grows over 38 acres of strawberries and plans on future expansions of blueberries, flowers, pumpkins, mums, and even Christmas trees. This spring, we opened Cottle Fun Farm, which is where we are today, a 12-acre park to experience that both something special for young and old to enjoy. Cottle Fun Farm will also have one of South Carolina's largest corn mazes in the fall of 2024. Other plans include the addition of a beautiful barn, as you can see here. Cottle Strawberry Farm, continuing growing the family farm tradition. Now I'd like to introduce you to our next speaker, Representative Patrick Haddon. Thank you, Ms. Cottle. Thank you for your vision. Your son, he gets it. Dreams are not for sale. Um, I want to thank a few people before I do. This, is a, this has been in the works for over two years. Um, and you would think that um, 
there are some groups that would be unlikely to work together, but in this case, this crowd right here shows me that South Carolina Ag is front and center with a lot of people. And I really appreciate that. Coming from a seventh, I'm a seventh generation farmer. We've got some, I know we've got one uh, young farmer from De La Isle here is a ninth generation. We have got to keep our farms sustainable. We've got to keep those properties intact with those families. And this bill is gonna do that. Governor, I wanna thank you for signing this legislation. Thank you for your support. Your team has been behind it all those two years. Um, it will be monumental with the changing of the landscape of ag in South Carolina. Thank you so much. I want to thank my chairman, Bill Hickson, who allowed us to go through the committee process with this. Bill Chumley, our subcommittee chair, uh, Senator Clymer, President Peeler, Commissioner Weathers, thank you for your staff and helping with this. I can't thank, there's so many people, Farm Bureau, uh, the Conservation League, uh, there's some 40 groups that got behind this to see this get done. And it's all about that next generation. So I want to thank you. Thank you for coming out this morning. Governor, whatever you did to get us this weather, <laughs> continue to do it. Thank you so much. I'd like to introduce the President of Farm Bureau, Harry Ott. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out this morning. What it shows me and the rest of us is your commitment to protecting agriculture in the state of South Carolina. I also want to thank a lot of people, but I want to thank the governor first and foremost. Uh, it was probably two years ago we were up on the ridge looking at some peaches, and the governor made a statement that he wanted to help protect agriculture. And what this is all about is trying to find that balance between industrial development and growth and agriculture. We need both. And the governor made the commitment that he was for both. And I believe our elected General Assembly, with the passage of this bill, have recognized that yes, we need to develop, but yes, we also need to protect our heritage and our agricultural property. Just a brief synopsis, we've lost over 280,000 acres of cropland in the state of South Carolina in the last 20 years. That's almost the size of Greenville, South Carolina. That type of loss is not sustainable if we are going to protect the dreams of the next generation. This bill doesn't fix everything, but this bill will give us a tool to put in our toolkit to help people who want to protect their farmland for the next generation to use this legislation with the help of Riley West, who I'm going to introduce with the Conservation Land Bank. But this bill shows that our elected officials understand that agriculture still is the number one industry in the state of South Carolina, and it is part of our heritage, and we want to make a commitment to protect that part of our heritage for generations to come. So I want to thank all of our elected officials for starting the process of recognizing the importance of agriculture in the past and the present and also in the future. And now I would like to introduce Riley West, who's the executive director of the Conservation Land Bank, who all of our process, processes when we try to do land trusts come through the Conservation Land Bank, and it's another commitment that our General Assembly has made. So, Riley. Well, thank you all for being here, and Ms. Cottle, thank you for hosting us. I can't imagine a more fitting place to talk about saving farmland and how important it is to South Carolina. I was coming down, I was reflecting on my remarks, and I thought I'd share this story. It was about a year ago, I went to go see the my, my former board member, uh, the late Larry Yance, uh, he has a big peach operation out in Johnston, South Carolina. And he wanted to know what he could do with his farm. And we had a pleasant conversation, but at the end of it, he pulled me aside. And when a man with terminal cancer pulls you aside and looks you in the eye, you pay attention. And he said, if farmland, it ain't going to happen in my lifetime, but if farmland in, down the road ceases to exist in South Carolina. It won't be because we made 
inferior products or grew inferior crops because the policies weren't in place to save them. And I think old Larry's smiling down on us right now because this is a, certainly a step in the right direction. And what I love about this bill is it does two things. It's the same si two sides of the same coin. It gives farmers the opportunity to liquidate equity out of their land, their most valuable holding, without having to sell it, as if they agree to keep it in farming. But this isn't an entitlement program. This is an investment by the state of South Carolina to make sure that places like this last well beyond our lifetimes. And I'll, uh, I'll end with this. I was at a meeting once and I heard a preacher gets up and he says, I'd like to make an invocation. And he says, dear God, please give us the wisdom to know what we have before we lose it. And I would just like to extend that and say thank you to the collective leadership of the state of South Carolina because I think they are bearing witness to that same wisdom. And I uh, am humbled and honored and, uh, by the challenge here, and I pledge to you that we'll do everything we can to make sure that places like this are around beyond our lifetimes. Dr. Dr. Whiteside with South Carolina State. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, to Governor Henry McMaster and Commissioner Hugh Weathers, I want to thank you all for inviting South Carolina State University to be a part of this and witness this milestone. Well, the economic landscape of South Carolina is marked with progress and advancement. We boast a vibrant and competitive economy led by agricultural forestry and tourism industries. Millions of people from around the world recognize South Carolina as a cultural gem, and more and more individuals and families are calling South Carolina home. While our progress makes South Carolina a better place to work, live, and play, our increasing development threatens the loss of agricultural lands across the state. From the breathtaking Blue Ridge Mountains in the upstate to the gleaming coast shorelines of the low country and every place in between. South Carolina rural communities are rich in farmlands that grow foods that we eat, produce fibers that provide the clothes that we wear, and timber that provides shelter. All are vulnerable to development. Sustainably decreasing these lands in these communities that supports the state's leading industry, which is agriculture. SC State PSA appreciates the contributions of these communities, the farmers and their families, and we recognize the need to preserve our valuable farmland. For many of the state's smaller minority farmers, the land on which they toil was handed down through generations from ancestors and family members who dream, was it, who dream it was to own land. Through our experienced and dedicated extension staff and researchers, SC State PSA actively works to ensure their dream persists. We offer heirs property education and training, as well as access to legal resources. The Agriculture Lands Pres Preservation Act will add to our toolbox to ensure farmlands are preserved and remain an asset to build generational wealth and provide income that helps to improve the quality of living and the standard of living for all South Carolinians. As we think about the preservation of working farmlands, what is keenly important is our vision for the future. We must continue to invest in opportunities that educate and train South Carolina's youth to become advocates for the industry and visionary leaders who will advance agriculture far beyond our imagination. Now, I know the South Carolina Women Gamecocks won the national championship, led by the great coach Don Staley, but today's signing is a win for South Carolina's agriculture industry because it ensures our economy continues to grow and thrive in the years to come. It is a win for South Carolina farmers and producers because it provides support and resources to help keep their families viable, and it's a win for the citizens of the state of South Carolina. I also want to thank our SC State Farm Partners, as well as our Advisory Council members and staff who joined us here today for this historic signing from across the state. And to thank you again, Government Master and Commissioner Weathers, for including SC State PSA in this celebration. And I will close with Nothing can be finer than living in South Carolina. Thank you. Amen. And after I get all my papers together, I want to call up the best commissioner in the United States, yeah. Commissioner Hugh Weathers. Y'all give him a hand, please. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Whiteside. 
Let me give you a couple of remarks from the office I have the privilege to occupy uh, as a fellow South Carolinian and as a farmer. Uh, as Commissioner and as President Ott mentioned, agribusiness is the largest contributor to our economy. It all stands on the backs of farmers and foresters. About 23,000 farmers producing what we grow to eat, wear, drive with, build our homes, creates over a quarter of a million jobs all across the state. Puts $50 billion through our economy, all because we grow things. We'd spend that same money on those finished products. They just come from who knows where. But because we grow things, is created here. And we can't grow things without what? Land or trees or ponds or forests. Uh, so this is very important to recognize the economic value and the economic contribution by agriculture. <laughs> now, we're all members of a great state. Now approaching, what, five and a half million. Depending on how long you've lived in this state, you could remember when we were two million and we became three million. It's a little different at five and a half million. Uh, they all seem to keep coming. I guess another million will show up next week. But what this bill says to them, we welcome you because we are a welcoming state. But this bill says we are a state that believes in what got us here, and agriculture has been a part of our past. It's a part of today, and it'll be a part of the future for our grandchildren uh, to be a part of this industry, my grandchildren, uh, who might want to be in production agriculture. So the state's different, but today sends a signal to those who want to be uh, citizens of our state. And finally, from a personal perspective, by way of this bill, I will go back and join Raleigh West's uh, team on the Conservation Bank, of which I sat on 20 plus years ago on the first Conservation Bank, and it had just as much of a collaborative effort to bring it into existence as this bill does to put the emphasis on agriculture. So that's a privilege for myself, Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Transportation, to come and, uh, and really straighten out Raleigh. Um, also, I live halfway to Charleston on our family farm. Uh, you think, well, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Well, apparently not from some of the values that are being offered for farmland in our area uh, because we're near the interstate. Uh, we, they have to have places to uh, build homes for these new South Carolinians or distribution warehouses, all these great things that help our economy. But this bill gives farmers more options uh, rather than just saying, well, I'll cash in and take the, take the windfall, as Joy said. Uh, it does give an option in between. So very pleased on behalf of the farmers who need that extra option, uh, pleased that we're telling all of our new members of our South Carolina family that we believe in agriculture and very pleased that we tell our farmers of the state we believe that what you do is still important to our economy, always will be. So from those perspectives. Now I do have a privilege to introduce our governor, my friend, a man who needs no introduction other than to say he's our governor and he loves our state as much as anybody in this crowd or any of the five and a half million people and because of that, uh, South Carolina is better also. It's my privilege to introduce Governor Henry McMaster. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. This is an enormously memorable moment. One is because you probably never see a bunch of men in suits standing out in a <laughs> strawberry field. <laughs> Just to kind of wrap up, it, it is, this, is, this is a great step forward. That a lot of people have been working for a long time to, to see that we preserve what is best in South Carolina and that we build on those things that can make a difference for our people. I always separate it into three categories. The, our economy, which is booming, as you know. Our educational strength, which is gaining. We have the best technical college system in the world. Everybody knows it. Great universities. Great schools. We, we've got some weak spots here and there, but we realize the value of education. That's what opens all the doors, and we're opening the doors to all those children to be sure they can get it and succeed in South Carolina. And also, our environmental and cultural heritage, and that is equally as important as the other two. In fact, all those three are inseparable. You have to have them all working together in coordination, not stepping on each other, not disturbing the others, 
because each adds to the strength of the others and helps it helps them grow. So what we're doing today, which is a reflection of the minds of those great people of South Carolina, everyone you see here was selected by the people to go do what is in the best interest of the people of our state. And this today is an enormous step forward. This will, their, their numbers, just briefly, forested, let's see, Forested land, we have about just over 2 million acres, 20 million acres in South Carolina. How much goes where? 41.5% is forested, 23% is wetlands, 113 is developed, 4.4 is cleared, 15.3 is agriculture, and 4.5% is water. We got a lot of water, and that's a good thing. We got fresh water, we got brackish water, we got salt water, we got every kind of water. Some states hardly have any water. But we have, that gives us great opportunity. And another thing that I've learned over the years is that we are a stable people. We believe in common sense. That's why we got through the pandemic better than anybody else. We didn't do all those crazy things. Some of them did. So where's that stability come from? It comes from our history. When we know our history, when we know how hard it was to get to where we are today, we appreciate what we have. And if you look in the history books, you'll see that there are over 250 battles and skirmishes in South Carolina in the Revolutionary War. People say that Huck's defeat up in York County, which was then followed by Kings Mountain and then followed by Cowpens, were the turning point of the American Revolution. That's when the British realized that their southern campaign was going to fail, and without it, the rest would fall apart. We played, some scholars say South Carolina played the critical role. In fact, we're, we're working hard to, to memorialize those places. There's a battlefield trust that's locating and trying to preserve those lands and putting up markers. And we've been looking, we think we got an idea where Francis Marion's uh, hideout was over in the PD, but the British couldn't find it and we can't quite find it, but <laughs> we have a pretty good idea where it is. But when the children come and look at those kind of things, they realize that it took a while to get here. And when they come out, when they come and play on these devices, these fine things, that are, these adventures that are being built for them, what are they going to see? They go look over and see soy, see, not soy, but they'll see strawberries and whatever else the coddles are going, going to farm here. And that adds to their knowledge of what goes on in South Carolina. So my question is, what are we going to look like in 100 years? I fly in the plane and go around the state to various things, and I look down, and it is, it is absolutely gorgeous. You can't tell. If you get up in a, a big jet, you don't see it, but if you fly a little low, it's really something to see. From the low country, you cannot beat those uh, lazy creeks in the low country and the, the swamps, and then you, you see the Midlands, and you see the forests, and then you go up to the mountains and all of that. It is just glorious. So we must be sure we here today are doing what is necessary to see that we preserve the beauty and the strength of this, of this state. So I want to thank all of you for being here, and I'm reminded I've learned this. Our stability, I think, is built in because there are a lot of people who don't give to flights of fancy and philosophical ideas that make no sense, and that includes farmers. You got to pull it out the ground. You got to water, it takes perseverance, it takes time. All of law enforcement, first responders, military, all of those men and women who wear the uniform, they have to make ends meet. They know that this causes that, causes that. They can't, can't do crazy things. They're stable, common sense. And I think I'd put engineers in there too because they have to make ends meet. But we in South Carolina, I believe, are in a better position than any state in the United States to succeed and thrive because we are doing the right things for the future. And a hundred years from now, we're going to be just as beautiful as we are today and maybe even more so. So thank all of you for being here. Thank of all those who made this possible. Thanks to the Coddle. And now if anybody's got an easy question, we'll try to answer it. Otherwise, we'll sign the bill. Any questions? No questions. Ready?